Have you ever wondered why your battery doesn't charge evenly? Uh, why it stops early? Why it goes dead early? Well, let's talk a little bit about top balancing and bottom balancing. In this video, I'm going to cover top balancing, bottom balancing. I'm even going to go in a little bit into passive or active BMS uh, balancing. And then we'll kind of go through which one's best for your situation. So let's get right to it. So let's talk about what is balancing first of all. So balancing is when you have a pack of uh, a pack, a battery pack, you either have four cells for a 12 volt, you have eight cells for a 24 volt, or you have um, 16 cells for a 48 volt. There's also a 36 volt in there where you can have 12 cells. So uh, I won't leave that out. But balancing is basically bringing all of those cells within a certain variance of each other, attempting to get them all charged and balanced 3.65 volts, let's say, which is maximum full, would be balanced. That would be bringing them all to the top. So that's kind of what balancing is about. Now let's talk about the different methods of balancing. There is top balancing. Top balancing is when you charge the entire pack all the way up to the top to get a full charge. Now, if you're looking at a 48 volt battery, in order to top balance at 3.65 volts, you're going to be charging all the way up to 58.4. Now, it's a very high likelihood before you get to 58.4 that your battery will stop the charging because what's gonna happen is one cell is going to make it there before all of the cells get there. Now, if they all get there together, you can get to 58.4. So the trick with top balancing is to bring all of those cells up and to get them. The best way to do top balancing is to do it in small increments. Bring them up to 56 volts, let them sit, let them balance out, let the BMS and other types of balancing methods, which we'll talk about here in a minute, take account and to balance them out. A lot of people used to in the old days when they were building a, a, a battery pack, they would go in and manually charge each one of the batteries and get them all to the same exact voltage so that when they hooked them up, they didn't have to worry about them being balanced. You had to buy balancers and so on and so forth. Today, we'll talk a little bit in a few minutes about BMSs and how BMSs have changed the way we do building of batteries and stuff, potentially changed it. Um, so top balancing is a matter of bringing them all up to their maximum capacity, bringing them all into 3.65 volts, or bringing them all up to a common voltage. Um, so that would be it. It's common for off-grid solar systems because a majority of the time with an off-grid solar system, you're going to be hitting that limit all the time and, and getting them. We'll go into bottom balancing next. Bottom balancing is when you bring them all down to what would be considered a uh, empty battery, commonly referred to as 2.5 volts. Now at 2.5 volts, if we take 2.5 times 16 cells, 2.5 times 16 cells, we end up with 40 volts. Now it's very uncommon that someone is going to discharge a battery all the way down to 40 volts. Usually you pick a voltage somewhere in the range of 45 or 44. I personally use 47 volts for mine, uh, but let's say that you did 47 divided by 16 cells. You're looking at 2.93 volts per cell. So you'll bring the battery down and zero it out there. Now you could take it all the way down to 44 um, for that. Most batteries are going to shut off. The BMS is going to shut off before you get there. The same reason they shut off when you're charging. When you're charging, you shut off because one cell hits that voltage. In bottom balancing, it's going to shut off sometimes a little early because you're going to have a cell that is not as strong as the other cells and it's going to go down faster. And when it hits that minimum voltage shut off that's configured either in your BMS or configured by the manufacturer for whatever battery pack you have, it's going to shut the battery off and tell you that it's that it's dead. That doesn't necessarily mean that all of the cells within the battery are, but the minimum standard is that all of the cells have to be over a certain voltage to continue. 
commonly known as 2.5, is considered an empty cell, no energy storage in it. Let's just talk a little bit about why you would use bottom balancing. Bottom balancing is often used in EVs, where you're not able to get it to a full charge all the time and keep it there. So what you commonly would do is drain it all the way down to zero to get all of the cells completely at 2.5 and then charge them back up and they would all be at an even voltage at that point. So that's what it's commonly used for is those that don't commonly hit the top mark Whereas a PV system is where you commonly hit it over and over and over every day and allowing it to top balance as opposed to bottom balance. Now, let's talk a little bit about passive or active balancers in your BMS and what is the difference and why they exist. So originally when we started working with BMSs, they had what we call a passive balancer. It was built into the BMS and basically all it did was pick the top uh, once a battery got over a certain point, it would pick the top cell if there was a, a huge deviance. Let's say that one was, uh, most of your batteries were in you know 3.45 voltage range and one cell was sitting at 3.56. It would just pick the, the highest cell and just trickle drain it. And it would slowly bring it down to this. Now, the problem with this is that as we all know, that is what we call wasting energy. It was burning off that energy into heat with simple resistive type drain. It was a slow drain. Granted, it wasn't a lot of that voltage, but a better way to do that is what we call active balancing. And active balancing uses a capacitor to store that drained voltage from the high one and then give it to a low cell in the same battery pack. So if you have one cell that's down at three, four, everything else is at 3.5, and one cell it's at 3.55, it will take from the 3.55 and give to the 3.4, thus decreasing both sides of the squeeze on the battery's range and helping you twice as much. And you also prevent that battery loss of just consumption in the battery. Next, let's talk about which one is which which one is better top balancing or bottom balancing um, often in solar systems everyone uses a top balancing because it's easy to get there the balancers that exist today or the bms's that exist today most of them have some kind of active or passive balancer if you have eg4 uh, life power 4 batteries you have a passive balancer if you have a JK BMS and a DIY battery, mo some of those have two amp active balancers. So depending upon your equipment will depend upon which one you have. But in most solar systems, you're looking at having some kind of balancer available. So you'll want to bring that voltage up and maintain it. Now, the trick to top balancing isn't only just charge up to 48 volts and say, okay, I'm done. The trick is, is to allow the BMS to do its job over a period of time. The further out of whack your battery is, in other words, the bigger the gap between the lowest battery and the highest battery, the longer this will take. So in order to truly top balance, you may need to do it in increments. For example, if your top full top balance, let's say, is 58 volts, then you may want to charge it to 56 volts and let it stay there for a day or two as it moves the voltage out of the very high cells into the low cells, maintains the 56 volts. It takes voltage from the high cells, moves it to the low cells, keeps the same overall pack back voltage, but allows you to go to a higher charge. So then the next phase would go up to 56.5 and 57 and 57.5 and you may even and you may even be able to skip more or you may have to slow down depending upon how bad of out of balance your battery is and whether you have an active balance uh, a active balancer that's taking from the high ones and giving to the low cells or whether you have an, a passive one which is just passively draining the highest one and thus you'll need to replenish that energy in order to get them back in to uh, to bring the battery's voltage back up to the minimum, to the charge voltage. And the trick here is, is the BMS is going to do its job and stop you from overcharging these cells. So you have to gradually increase the voltage in order to allow it to bring down those ones that are gonna be a viol violators of that rule. So that all the ones that are below the voltage that's needed can be brought up 
slowly as these are brought down and thus decreasing the amount of imbalance in your battery pack. That's what really top balancing is about. Uh, but it is not as a direct science as you would think. You would think you could just set the battery charger to 58, tell it to float there or tell it to absorb to do absorption there for 24 hours and everything would be fine. It doesn't quite work that way all the time. Um, but it is easier to maintain a top balance with a solar system because you're most likely going to be charging up every day or more commonly than anything else. Bottom balancing uh, may be better if you're looking for deep discharges of, let's say, an EV system. An EV system, a lot of the times, you may not go all the way down to 0%. You may go down to you know, 15% or 20% and then recharge for the night or do some variation of charging and then leave in the morning and you never quite make it to either both the charge or the discharge. My suggestion is, and in that case, in the EV, that you would do a full discharge uh, cycle and maintenance on these types of batteries, it depends on how quickly they get out of whack. But you won't, last thing you wanna do is be driving down the road in your EV and find out that 10% is actually zero. And that is the downside to not doing some type of top balance or bottom balance. And it will also depend on your EV, what type of balancer you have in it. Is it active or passive? Um, and I am not super familiar with that, with charging of an EV as far as balancing the battery. I do know that, that the bottom balancing is the preferred method for EVs to ensure that when you put voltage in, it doesn't come out. Now, let's talk a little bit about what I call my unpopular opinion when it comes to balancing. I have a preferred method that incorporates both a bottom balance and a top balance. And let me give you an example why. The bottom balance for me is like having a five gallon jug that has a spigot on it. And I can't see inside the jug, but I put five gallons of water in there. And every day I come by and I take out, uh, you know, five ounces of water, four ounces of water, and I drink it and I go on. And the next day I come back and I take four ounces out. Now, the battery's BMS and the battery shunt is measuring that I've taken out those four ounces every day. The problem is it's not taking into account that if the nozzle has a very slow leak and it's dripping and it, and it, doesn't me it can't measure it because it's too slow, or does it also take into account that there's evaporation? So what ends up happening is I get to the end of my battery and what I thought I had put in, which was five gallons, which truly was five gallons, is no longer five gallons because a half a gallon has either evaporated or dripped out of the leaky faucet or was so slow of a flow, in the case of most BMSs, it was so slow that it didn't actually register that it was coming out of the battery. And therefore the mathematical calculation of what's gone in and has come out is takes on the butterfly effect. And the longer you go without bottom, bottom balancing, the more of the bottom of that charge doesn't actually exist. It's phantom power that is either trickled out or has evaporated or some other uh, way of just been lost. One of the reasons I believe this to be true with bottom balancing is that if I take a battery and I charge it up to 50%, and I ship the battery somewhere, which the manufacturers ship it to us at 50%, it state, base, openly states that you're going to lose a certain percentage over time. Well, if I didn't use that, then how would the, balance, how would the battery's BMS know that that voltage, how would it know that that charge is gone? The fact is it won't. And when you get down to zero, you'll find out that zero is actually 8% or 10% or whatever percentage it happens to be that's missing at the bottom of the thing. Just like the barrel, when I start taking that water out, I get to my last day. Or actually, if I've lost a half a gallon, I get to my last two days and I go to the spigot and it's empty because eight ounces is gone. It either evaporated or dripped out. Same thing's true in my opinion. The same thing's true for bottom balancing. Now, I like top balancing because after doing a bottom balance, this then allows all the cells to become evenly distributed the power and equal across the board. So bottom shows me that the bottom of the tank is truly the bottom of the tank. And that when I add five gallons of water that I actually have five gallons of water in there. The top allows me to look at 
the individual cells within the battery and make sure that each one of them contains its quantity, appropriate quantity of energy, so that I can pull that power out and use it. Now, that means that to effectively have a well-balanced battery, in my opinion, and it is not a popular opinion, and I have fought tooth and nail over this opinion before with multiple people, but I am still a firm believer because when I do this, I get better results. I completely discharge the battery all the way down to zero where the BMS shuts it off. And then you completely charge the battery up to and then use the scaling system of 56, 56.5, 57, 57.5 in order to allow the battery appropriate amount of time to balance. Therefore, when it drains off or a hurricane comes or I have an outage, I have some level of competence, confidence, I have some level of confidence that zero is actually there and not some number that has trickled out or evaporated on me. That is my controversial view on balancing is that both bottom and top balancing is more accurate. Takeaways from what I've said. Using a BMS that supports balancing is a huge benefit. It allows you to get away with things that you didn't use to, where you had to usually get an old manually. You had to have individual balancers on different things. They still sell them, um, and a lot of people still use them. They are resisting the change of the BMS doing it. But the fact is, it is the wave of the future to have the BMS help you manage those cells and make sure they're all accurate for top balancing and, and, and leveling them out. Most of them are configurable and you can set where they start. Usually most people start at about 2.4 volts per cell and then they only balance the top leg because obviously you don't want to balance in the middle of the day when the battery is right in the middle. Uh, all cells are probably going to be fairly equal at that point. What you want to balance at is at the very, very top or at the very, very bottom. Okay, um, for solar storage and regular balancing, top balancing is more practical. And balancing when you first do an installation used to be super critical that you went in and balanced every single cell. When I built my DIY battery, like in the video right there, uh, you'll see that that's what I did. Is it totally necessary these days? No, probably not. But because it was my first real DIY battery, I wanted to go through every single one of the steps and understand it. And fortunately, I did. That allowed me to go back and explain all the steps to you. I still would probably do a top balance on all the cells if I was to build a DIY battery tomorrow. Um, I may charge them differently than one cell at a time. I may attach them all in parallel and charge them all at once. But I certainly would probably still do it. Anyway, um, I encourage you to let me know in the comments below on what methods do you use to balance and why? Uh, how does it work for you? And have you experienced any of the problems that we discussed today? Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you subscribers. And I hope that if this video content is useful to you and if you've made it this far, you can give me a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, welcome back to Battery Week. We're doing all battery videos this week and maybe next week. So subscribe now so you don't miss anything. Thank you.